Let's continue. In this example, we have a squared times x plus y the quantity squared plus b squared times x plus y the quantity squared again. So here, hopefully it's a little bit more obvious that x plus y the quantity squared is the term that's common to both, so it's the GCF. As before, we write the GCF first. We open a set of parentheses, and then how do we know what goes inside the parentheses? Well, we divide each term. So if we divide a squared times the quantity x plus y squared by the GCF x plus y the quantity squared, we're just going to be left over with a squared. So that goes inside. And then here, if we do the same thing, divide this term by x plus y the quantity squared by the GCF, we end up with plus b squared. Now I want you to think back, so pause the video here, think about why or why not this can be factored further. So why is it this maybe can be factored further? And if it can, uh, figure out what the factors would be. And if it cannot be factored further, explain why, or maybe give me a justification for why you think it cannot be factored further. Questions four, five, six are star problems. So here, uh, these might be correct, these might not be correct. Some of them do include uh, potential mistakes that students have made in the past. So it might be a matter of it wasn't done to completion or there might be steps that are missing. So pause the video here, work these problems yourself, and then come back and compare the solutions that you have. The next example we have uh, to factor the sum or difference of cubes completely. So here we have to know our formula. If we don't, we're sort of stuck in the mud. If we do know the formula, it becomes relatively simple. So, oops. First thing is always consider whether you can rewrite this as a sum or difference of cubes. So we have x cubed minus 125. Well, I can rewrite this as a simple cube. It's just the cube of x. Now, what would we cube to get 125? We would cube 5. 5 times 5 is 25. 25 times another 5 is 125. And now, because we can rewrite this as a difference of cubes, we can apply the formula. a minus b times the quantity a squared plus ab plus b squared. So a minus b would just be x minus 5. That's what we have here. Remember that the sign here, the sign on the binomial is the same as the sign in the problem. So this would just be x minus 5 times the quantity square the first term. So square x, that gives you x squared. This is the opposite sign as in the problem. So if the sign in the problem is a minus, this should be a plus, plus ab. So a times b, x times 5 is just 5x. Plus b squared, square of the second term. So square of 5 would be 25. And that's it. This cannot be factored further. This trinomial is always going to be prime. If we could have factored it, we would have factored it. So pause, make sure you really understand that. And actually, it would be a very good exercise at this stage to pause the video here and try to factor this to convince yourself that you can't. It's not going to work. Even if you try using the quadratic formula, you're not going to get real roots. The next example is x cubed plus 125. Now here I'm going to sort of talk about the power of the, knowing the formulas. If you know the formula for x cubed minus y cubed or a cubed minus b cubed, remember we said that it's the same formula for the sum except the signs are different. Algebraically you're going to get the same stuff. So if you have x and 5 here, you're also going to get x and 5 here. You have x squared, x squared, 5x, 5x, 25, 25. Everything is the same, except the signs need to be arranged. The sign in the binomial has to be the same as the sign in the problem. The sign on the middle term has to be the opposite of the sign in the problem. So if you know the answer to this problem, you don't have to do this one from scratch. You just look up here and say, hey, I just need to fix the signs. That gives us that. Last one in this list is 16s to the fifth plus 54s squared. Now, consider just the numbers first, 16 and 54. A number that goes into, the largest number that goes into both of these is actually just two. So you can factor a two out, and then you look for s to the fifth and s squared. The most s's that you can factor out of both, not just one, but both of them is s squared. You can factor out two s's. So you have two s squared, 
times, now how do we know what goes inside? We divide each term by the GCF. So 16 divided by two gives us eight. S to the fifth divided by S squared gives us S to the third. 54 divided by two will give us plus 27. And then S squared divided by S squared is just one, that divides out, so you're just left with this. Now here, you have two terms. So you factored out the GCF, you have two terms, now you're thinking, can I rewrite this as a sum of squares, difference of squares, sum of cubes, difference of cubes? This can be rewritten as a, as a sum of cubes. So we can rewrite 8s cubed as 2s, the quantity cubed, plus we can rewrite 27 as 3, the quantity cubed. And then at this stage, and that was just a matter of applying the formula that we've memorized, hopefully. So the 2s squared, the GCF doesn't vanish, it comes along for the ride. A plus B, so 2s plus 3, times the quantity A squared. Now if I square 2s, 2s times 2s will give us 4s squared. Minus, now remember this is the opposite of the sign in the problem, so this would be a minus here, A times B. So 2s times 3 will give us 6x, 6s, and then b squared, or the second term squared, 3 squared gives us 9. So similarly, question 4, 5, 6, or part 4, 5, 6 are also star problems. Verify whether these are done correctly or not. Apply the formulas yourself, then compare your answers, and if they don't match, or if the, there's a mistake somewhere, identify specifically where there's a mistake and what the mistake itself is. I'll see you guys in the next video.